Hey, in this video, I'm talking about the truth about saturated fat. Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? Does it increase your risk of heart disease? And what are things you can do to consume saturated fat to help actually improve your overall health? Well, first off, what we've got to start with is what most of us have been taught to believe. And that is that saturated fat is bad for our heart. And the reason why is that we have this lipid hypothesis for cardiovascular disease that this hypothesis predominates in the medical world and in the cardiology world. And that hypothesis is the higher your cholesterol, in particular LDL, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is considered the bad cholesterol, the higher that is, the higher your risk of developing heart disease. And so the idea with the lipid hypothesis and its relationship to saturated fat is this, saturated fat increases LDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol increases your risk of heart disease, and therefore saturated fat increases your risk of heart disease. So saturated fat kind of gets lumped into that whole category of cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. Now, research has looked at this, in fact, Study, first study I wanna talk about is out of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, big, huge meta-analysis, over 350,000 people that they looked at. They looked at saturated fat content, and what they found was that there was no relationship between the amount of saturated fat somebody consumed and their risk of coronary heart disease and coronary vascular disease, so the risk of strokes, heart disease, all that kind of stuff, so no relationship. The second study I wanna talk about is a Japanese study, it was on Japanese men in particular, and they looked at these men for over basically about a 14 year period, 58,000 men over a 14 year period. And what they showed was that the higher saturated fat uh, content had no increased risk. So those who had higher saturated fat levels, no increased risk in coronary heart disease. And they actually had an inverse risk, meaning a lower risk of developing a stroke or some sort of cerebrovascular disease. So in a sense, that sort of study needs to be looked at closely if we're thinking saturated fat is bad for heart disease, right? Is if it increases our risk of heart disease because it actually showed that it didn't increase your risk of heart disease, but it actually improved, it actually reduced your risk of developing a stroke. And then most recently in 2024 journal uh, Metabolites, what it actually did was it showed that Oreo cookies actually lowered uh, LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, significantly more than high intensity statin drugs. In fact, the Oreo cookies, the individual was consuming in it, and there's a reason for this, he's actually, he was on a ketogenic diet, and there's a class of individuals called lean mass hyperresponders. They're like me, they're very lean, very healthy metabolically, they're on a low carbohydrate diet. When they go on a low carbohydrate diet, they eat a lot more saturated fat, and also their LDL cholesterol goes way up, right? And so for this individual, his LDL cholesterol, I think it was like 384 when he first you know, started the study, 384, and then he stayed on this sort of low carb, high fat diet, right, including high saturated fats. All he did was add in 12 Oreo cookies a day for 16 days, about basically adding in 100 grams of carbohydrates, and like a thousand more calories. And after 16 days, got his blood tested again, and his LDL went from 384 down to 111, 71% 70, reduction in LDL cholesterol, considered the bad cholesterol. All he did was add in the Oreo cookies. Are the Oreo cookies healthy for you? You know well enough to know that's not true, right? Processed sugar, chemicals, trans fats, all kinds of bad stuff in there. I don't recommend eating Oreo cookies, okay? Then what he did was he took three months where he went back on a ketogenic diet, high fat, high saturated fat diet, just kind of the same diet, just didn't eat the Oreos. It, he called it a washout period. So washed out you know, the carbohydrates, the sugar from the Oreos out of his system for three months, retested his LDL cholesterol. Now it was up over 400. So now his LDL was up over 400. Cardiologists would be freaking out. Okay, we need to put you on a statin. They did. So he went on the statin for 20 milligram dose of Crestor, which is a high dose, that's um, a high intensity dose of Crestor. And in three months, it lowered his cholesterol to 284, which ultimately was a 32% reduction. What that meant was that the Oreo cookies reduced his cholesterol 71% in 16 days. And the statin drug, the cholesterol lowering drug, reduced it 32% in three months. 
And so what does that study tell us? It doesn't tell us that, that, that Oreo cookies are good for us. What it tells us is that we need to rethink the whole idea of this whole lipid hypothesis and that some individuals, if they're metabolically healthy, that actually their body's naturally gonna increase LDL particles and as a way of helping the body to burn fat for fuel. It's actually a natural healthy response and doesn't increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. That's what we need to, to rethink. And so this whole idea of saturated fat increasing LDL, which increases heart disease, we need to rethink it. There's too much studies out there showing that this is just not the case. Now, saturated fat, why can it be so healthy for the body? Well, all of our cells have a membrane, right? It's, it's called, it's, it's actually a membrane made out of fat. It's the outer layer of the cell and it's a double lipid bilayer, meaning that there's fatty acids pointing in both directions, inside the cell and outside the cell. It's kind of like the nervous system of the cell. It senses the outside environment and makes changes in the inside environment based on what's happening in the outside environment. For the cell membrane to be healthy and to receive messages well and to have good hormone sensitivity, like insulin sensitivity, for example, um, and good neurotransmitter uh, receptor sensitivity, we need it to be very, very strong and stable. 50% of a cell membrane, or actually more than 50%, should be made of saturated fats and these things called phospholipids. Saturated fats are critical in the kind of formation of phospholipids in the cell membrane. So saturated fats, consuming them in our diet helps with overall membrane stability, the, st the stabilization of our cell membranes. It also helps us use omega-3 fats, which we know are anti-inflammatory. They also provide a level of fluidity in the cell membrane, so they're important for that as well. So it helps us use those more effectively. On top of that, saturated fats, because they're, you know, they have no double bonds, and so they're not easily uh, broken down. And so they're, they're different than an omega-3 fat or omega-6 fat, which contain um, carbon double bonds that are more prone to oxidation. And so because of that, they are, you know, basically they're very, very stable. So consuming them um, means that we're gonna have less oxidative stress in general in our system as opposed to eating a lot of polyunsaturated fats. And so what are our best sources of saturated fat? It's gonna be things like coconut oil, any of our palm oils or coconut oils. I prefer coconut oil because it's high in what we call medium chain saturated fats, which actually are very beneficial for the body. They actually turn into ketones quickly, easy to metabolize. We don't need bile to break them down. Things like capric and caprylic acid. Um, another type of, uh, of saturated fats called stearic acid. It's the most common one that's in our cell membranes, 18 carbon chain uh, fat. It's actually a preferred fuel for the myocardium, the, the cells in our heart. And so it's actually a preferred fuel there. And so what are some other good sources? We talked about coconut oil, also beef tallow, or really any of our grass-fed organic animal products. That way we're getting the healthy fats and we're not getting a whole lot of omega-6 fats and, and a lot of pro-inflammatory fats as well as pro-inflammatory chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, hormones that perhaps are in the meat, right? Or in the fat of the meat. And so getting it from good quality animal products, getting it from coconut oil sources, I think is, is the best way to go. And we wanna be consuming those. And so again, it provides, it reduces the overall oxidative stress load in our system. Even though saturated fat itself doesn't contain any oxidants, because it's not prone to oxidation, therefore it actually provides more stability inside of our system. Now, when can saturated fat be a problem? A couple cases, one is, if you're not producing enough bile. A lot of people have very congested bile ducts in their liver and gallbladder. And so because of that, they're not putting out bile effectively. And bile is very key for emulsifying these fats. Any sort of long chain saturated fat, stearic acid, like I talked about, the kind of saturated fats we're gonna get from eating animal meat, um, eating animal fats, and even coconut oil, which is something like, uh, you know, 50% lauric acid, 50% of the fats are lauric acid, which you consider a medium chain fat, but you also need bile in order to emulsify it and break it down. For those individuals, if they're not producing enough bile, they're gonna end up having more digestive distress. They might have pain in their liver area, right? Gallbladder area. They may end up you know, with gallstones. They um, oftentimes will have diarrhea or constipation and just feel really bad. They might even have something called pruritus where they have itchiness all over their body 
when they consume a, a diet that's higher in fat, particularly saturated fats, which really need a lot of these lipase and bile, the lipase enzyme from the pancreas, as well as bile to break down and emulsify. So individuals that have gut dysbiosis, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, they have poor bile flow, they're not able to metabolize these fats, they can become really problematic. In fact, if you don't digest, if you don't break down the fats well in the small intestine, they actually will create something called a lipid raft where they will actually, in a sense, be a carrier for bad gut microbes to get into the bloodstream which drives up inflammation in the body. So that's when they can be really problematic. So if you have poor digestive health, you wanna get your digestive health really stabilized before you're adding in a lot of you know, saturated fat, hot, you know, really any types of fats. You wanna actually, in general, wanna make sure you're getting your gut healthier and your bile flow improved. I've done a lot of videos on improving bile flow. One simple thing you can do is a castor oil pack right over your liver gallbladder. Do that for 45 minutes to an hour every single day. That will help dilate, open up those bile ducts and help it flow. You can also consume a lot of bitters, things like milk thistles, cilantro, parsley, radishes, artichokes, dandelion. We say bitter is good for your liver. That bitter, the bitterness has compounds that help improve, thin the bile and help improve bile flow. So that's, that's one classification of people. If you have um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, if you have poor bile flow, you wanna make sure that you're getting that optimized and then that's gonna help your body metabolize the saturated fat better so you can have better overall digestion, less inflammation in your body. Second classification is individuals that have the ApoE4 gene, genotype, right? And this is about 25% of the population. Most people have ApoE3 or ApoE2, okay? It's roughly 75% of the population. The ApoE4s, their body's just not as good at breaking down, metabolizing, and utilizing saturated fat. And for those individuals, they also have a higher risk of developing dementia, Alzheimer's disease. So for those individuals, I really recommend a high monounsaturated fat, fat diet, and maybe about 10% of their fats coming in from saturated fats, and then consuming a lot of, for example, high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil, which I think is really good for anybody. Um, I think that's a great fat to consume, high polyphenol fresh pressed extra virgin olive oil, but particularly for the ApoE4s, getting most of their you know, fats from that olive oil or from avocados, uh, one of those good healthy fat sources. So in my opinion, the best fat sources are gonna be um, high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil, avocados are a great fat source. I think pasture-raised eggs, even that's higher in saturated fats, like we talked about, that's a great fat source for most individuals. Also coconut oil, like we talked about, grass-fed meats, wild caught fish, wild caught seafood, that's gonna be the best sources of healthy fats. What should you cook with when it comes to fat? Saturated fat is actually the best one to cook with. In fact, one I forgot to recommend is grass-fed butter or ghee. High in saturated fats, high in fat-soluble nutrients, ideally getting it grass-fed, grass-fed butter and ghee. High in all your fat-soluble nutrients, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K2. High in phospholipids and choline, lots of really good stuff. So your grass-fed butter, fantastic. That's what I usually cook with. You can also cook with beef tallow, which is a great fat source to cook with, as well as coconut oil. Those oils can, they have a higher, what we call oxidative stability. So when I look at cooking with fats, I don't look at smoke point, okay? Instead, the most important thing to look at is the oxidative stability of the fat. The more saturated fat it is, the higher percentage of saturated fat, the, the less prone to oxidation, the higher the oxidative stability and the better it is to cook with. So again, that's gonna be coconut oil, that's gonna be grass-fed butter or ghee, that's gonna be beef tallow. Those are some of the best fats to use for cooking. Again, if you're ApoE4, um, you might use extra virgin olive oil if you've already consumed enough saturated fat. If you're just cooking with a little bit of that grass-fed butter or something like that, I think that's fine. And then on top of your food, your vegetables, your meat, you're putting in extra virgin olive oil or using avocados as kind of more of your dietary fat that you're consuming in your meal. So I think that's really important to, to, to do as well. So ultimately the summary of this is that saturated fat does not increase your risk of heart disease. That's what the studies say. Saturated fat can be very healthy for a vast majority of the population. In fact, the vast majority of the population probably would do very good on a high saturated fat diet as long as it's coming from, in my opinion, getting it more from grass-fed organic animal products or from coconut oil. Um, that's where we wanna get the saturated fat from. 
If you are an APOE4 genotype, or if you have a family history of dementia, Alzheimer's, that may mean you have an APOE4 genotype, or you can get that tested if you look at your genes, then a lower saturated fat diet is gonna be better for you, consuming more of your fats from avocados, from extra virgin olive oil, or if you just have really poor bile flow, like if you feel like you eat a, a higher fat meal, even a healthy higher fat meal, you eat an avocado or something like that, you just don't feel good. You feel nauseous, you have itching, um, you have constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux. If that's you, then you need to get your gut health back in check, right? And your bile flow back in check. We talked about a couple strategies. If that's you, make sure you're doing that before you start increasing the overall fat content in your diet in general. Now, with that said, there is actually a saturated fat that is four carbon chain. That's actually one of the best things for your gut. It's called butyric acid. It's a four carbon chain, what we call short chain fatty acid, okay? And that you can actually get in supplemental form. I have one called Tributarin X, for example, a great form of butyric acid that gets deep into the gut and that actually helps strengthen the enterocytes. The intestinal cells creates less permeability in the gut creates a better overall microbiome makeup and actually helps heal and seal the gut. And so you can actually use a saturated fat that your body naturally produces. In fact, good gut bacteria eat fiber and they will produce butyric acid. They will produce butyrate. And it's very anti-inflammatory, reduces your overall risk of heart disease, all cause inflammatory disorders in general when you are producing enough butyrate from your gut microbiome or you, know, you can also supplement with it as well. Um, and that's extremely helpful and beneficial. So saturated fats, they range across the board from you know, four carbon chain butyric acid to 18 carbon chain stearic acid. The more carbons are added to that chain, the more digestive enzymes and bile we need to be able to metabolize it. So the more compromised your gut is, the more you're gonna have trouble with the longer and longer chain saturated fats, but they are extremely important. In fact, stearic acid is the main, the 18 carbon chain, the main fat that's in our cell membrane. So consuming that from our diet can be extremely beneficial as long as we're able to digest, metabolize it, and effectively uh, absorb it without it increasing inflammation in our system. So that's a big thing that we wanna remember, but we can also be using those small chain, short chain butyric acids to help improve gut health, to help improve bile flow, and overall to help improve our life and our health. So hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this.